So there's a, a debate emerging, I think, about uh, what kind of connectivity will be required to uh, enable full level four, level five uh, autonomy. Uh, right now, obviously, we have companies that are delivering an autonomous experience without any connectivity at, at all, essentially. But uh, a true sort of commercially viable and, and uh, perhaps certifiable autonomous experience uh, would be aided, uh, is the, the wide belief, by connectivity. Uh, but precisely what kind of connectivity I is the question. And really, to enable full autonomy, we're probably talking about vehicle to infrastructure. So that's a big change, and that's going to take some time. Well, given the outcry over the uh, uh, potential banning in, in German cities of uh, diesel vehicles and also uh, other cities across Europe, it would seem there is a lack of alignment, especially given uh, VW's uh, enhanced uh, commitment to diesel announced at the Geneva Motor Show here. So we're not really aligned yet. Uh, the good news is public authorities are communicating with the car companies. Uh, the first significant breakdown uh, has occurred in the U.S. where you had a kind of a joint effort between regulators and the government and the car companies to bring DSRC to the market as a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication or vehicle-to-X communication capability. And uh, this appears to have uh, either fallen apart or to be falling apart uh, and, uh, and breaking down in internationally. So uh, VW certainly is um, staying in line uh, with at least those public authorities that uh, still believe that that is the best path forward. Uh, but you have in the U.S. individual states of the 50 in the United States trying to continue to independently push this idea of DSRC technology for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. So it's just one, one example of, a, of this kind of a breakdown. But um, there are authorities, uh, public authorities, that are looking at uh, options like Uber, ride-hailing services, car sharing, that would allow them to dedicate less space to parking. So this is a, a core area where uh, municipalities see uh, opportunity for more retail or living space in cities and requiring less space for vehicles, uh, using advanced technology and, and networking of vehicles. So uh, we're just beginning those conversations, I would say. So there's three levels for data monetization and management. Uh, the first step is car companies collecting the data and, and finding internal uh, uh, parties to use that data and, and to pay for the data internally, including dealers for service leads, things of this nature. And then you have uh, external engagement, sort of a level two data uh, extraction and monetization where car companies are selling data either to insurance companies or to uh, municipalities or governments uh, for road conditions or weather information. And then the third level, which is the big challenge, and it is here that's opened the door to this opportunity and a few other players in the market, which is the idea of car companies sharing data between one another, uh, creating a, an aggregate of data uh, across car companies, um, which would really maximize the potential value of that information. Um, so at the core of all of this uh, is a proposition that people I think are just coming to grips with, which is the idea that the car is essentially a browser. So just as Google is reaping about $100 billion in revenue from your online search activity, uh, your driving activity is the equivalent of on-road search, okay? Everything you do in your car is an indication of intention, and that's really valuable information. And so the car companies are just coming to grips with this. We do have security concerns. We have privacy concerns. Certainly those are issues we'll be talking about here today. And um, I, I think we're making progress on that front.